Hi, this is Kathy. Welcome to Craft with Kathy. I hope everyone's had a good Memorial Day weekend. I wanted to do this little project tonight that would coordinate with one of my projects from last week. Last week I did this um, <clears throat> blah 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 coffee on a board and pillar. And tonight I'd like to um, add a coordinating transfer design to it called To the Fridge and Back. These are both from our Kickstart program that starts tomorrow, so June 1st they're available to order. Our Creative Kickstart promotion runs June 1st through June 30th or until supplies run out. Basically, here's the details. Purchase $75 US or $100 Canadian and receive one free Creative Kickstart transfer. They're eight and a half by 11, are B size transfers. Purchase 100 in the US or 130 Canadian, and you get two free Creative Kickstart transfers. Purchase 125 US, 160 Canadian, and get all three Creative Kickstart transfers for free. But hurry up, this is only good till June 30th or while our supplies last. Get them before they're gone. Anyway, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. I know I had started a little bit early. Um, feel free to say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm coming at you from the suburbs of Chicago, west of Chicago, where it was a very nice day today, actually. Hopefully we're going to be into a little bit more normal spring-like temps. That would be great. And um, this was last week, a project from last week. I'm going to just move this out of the way. And what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to do on the um, board and base. And you're probably familiar with the board and base. It fits perfectly for 5x7 um, transfers. This is actually a double eight and a half by 11, but it's split into two. So we get two for the price or, you know, for a B size transfer here. And this board and base could either go together horizontally or vertically. So it's great for, and then of course it's chalkboard and it's double sided. And because it's chalkboard, it's erasable. So when you tire of the design or your decor changes, you can change the design easy enough by just spritzing it with water and cleaning it up with a paper towel. Can't ask for more than that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, let me, um, our transfers with multiple images on one transfer have cut lines to show you where to cut, and I'm gonna just cut this in half so that I can put one design on one side and one design on the other. But I've got another idea for this in mind too. In a lot of kitchens, I realize counter space is at a premium. So sometimes you don't always have the room to display what you'd like. Well, I was thinking about that today, and even though we have a lot of counter space, um, you know, things suck up the space, like a microwave and a coffee maker and whatever else, right? So I was like, okay, what would work for people who don't have the counter space, right? And I was thinking, okay, wait a second, if I do it on the board and base, this isn't too heavy, and this is the idea that I came up with. I'm just taking one of these little magnet clips that you could use for um, chips or whatever, and I attached it. I don't have anything magnet around, I mean metal around me that I could put this on other than my, my pole for my camera, which isn't probably a good idea. Anyway, I attached this little clip to the top of my... Um, board from my board and vase, my chalkboard, and I tested it on our refrigerator. Now our, free, our refrigerator is the stainless steel finish, but let's face it, all refrigerators are metal, right? It sticks fine, it holds it perfectly. So if you don't have counter space and you wanna put a little decor on your fridge, these would be perfect, especially love you to the fridge and back. So I'm gonna need a little input on a couple things. I'm pretty sure that I'm going with uh, our couture teal and white because that's basically what I've been added as, adding as accent pieces in this kitchen. But um, 
you could basically go with any colors that would work in yours and we have a large variety of chalk pastes available and it is chalk paste not chalk paint totally different our paste is water soluble and can be removed from most surfaces so if you use this on chalkboard or dry erase or plexiglass or glass or mirror or metal you could just spritz it with water and wipe it off if you put it on wood it's a little iffy. A lot of times the pigment soaks into the wood and you'd have to sand it or repaint it. But on many other surfaces, <coughs> it's basically washable. Take it off whenever you want. So here's my question to you. I think these are both cute. And I'm thinking of doing in couture teal and white. And with that, I was thinking of doing the work and the work in the teal and the snack, snack in the teal and then the hard and often in the white. Or I could do the teal work hard and the snack often in white. I don't know. I'm kind of torn with that. But for my heart, what I was actually thinking of doing is the hot mess technique where you just plop down different colors and smear them together a little bit so you get a little bit of a marbling. Or I could just go in the teal or I could just go in the white. What do you think? Help me decide on which direction to go with this. And while we think about that a little bit, let's get started on the work hard snack often. Work hard snack often, it really does sound rewarding, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna use a fuzzing cloth. Our fuzzing cloth has one side that's uh, a terry cloth and the other side is a microfiber. And to fuzz, we always use the terry side to dry our chalkboards or to um, shine something up or to actually help dry our transfers, we use the microfiber. But I'm gonna use the terry side to deliberately apply lint to my transfer. And you might say, well, why would you wanna deliberately apply lint to your transfer? Our transfers are made out of vinyl, which is the teal and silk screen or mesh, which you're seeing through to the backer or the carrier sheet. And they're adhesive backed. They're reusable adhesive backed mesh transfers, which give you a very nice clear image of the wording or any images on the transfer. So it makes them extra special. So because they're adhesive backed, depending upon the surface you're applying them to, they are gonna stick well or maybe extremely well and basically for glass or mirror or metal they're going to stick very very snugly and you don't want to have to struggle picking them off the surface so what you do is you fuzz them you deliberately diminish that adhesive a little bit so that they don't stick as snugly and then you can remove them without pulling or tugging at them and removing our transfers from the backing sheet or the carry sheet carrier sheet is usually pretty easy especially when you have fingernails which I barely have anymore basically if you just run your finger across the edge you could usually lift it up and if you notice our transfers the adhesive side is shiny and our carrier sheet has a shiny side that's similar to freezer paper and we always put the shiny side of the carrier or the backer sheet against the adhesive side of the transfer so that it doesn't inadvertently stick to anything else and the other side of the back or transfer sheet is dull. So you could always differentiate one side from the other. And I'm going to just apply this to our fuzzing cloth. Smooth it down. Lift it up. Apply it again. I generally will do our new transfers like three times. Smooth it down. You don't want it to stick to itself like I just felt folded it on itself a little bit. And that should be good. The only other thing is if you are using this in the base, think about our little base has a slot in it and it's probably about a half inch deep. Actually, I could measure that and it is a half inch deep. Okay, so you want to allow for a half inch at the bottom. You don't want your design to end up in the bottom. So always allow a little bit extra for that. If we're going to put this on the refrigerator with a little magnet, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to just lay this down on my chalkboard. Just 
and I want it to be straight. This is, I probably don't have enough room for the wording here. I'm getting really close to the bottom. I have barely half an inch there, so I'm going to lift this up a little bit. Just remember to watch for that when you put it down. And if you forget and make a mistake and do have it too close to the bottom, no big deal. Spritz it with water, erase it with a paper towel, and do it again. You'll see how amazingly quick this comes together. If you're new to this product, just comment new below so that I could fill you in on some little other details, which I'm happy to do. My first time seeing the product, I was just totally amazed. So work hard in teal, snack often in white. Which way do we want to go? Or do we want to alternate teal, white, teal, white? I'm going to go teal, work hard, snack often in white. So I'm just opening up my paste, my jar of paste. Let me put this transfer aside so it's not in the way. I have a little stir stick here. Let me get my mouse out of the way. Sorry about that. And I want to make sure that my paste is a consistency between yogurt and sour cream. It should stir up real nice and easy. This is our newly configured paste. It's called Creamy Dreamy, and that it is. It's not drippy, but it's soft and pliable. So if our my paste had dried up a little bit, I would add distilled water, a spritz of distilled, distilled water to it to thin it down and stir it up. You want to use distilled water at all times because the pigments in your tap water could actually interfere with the pigments in the chalk paste and cause the color to alter a bit. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to apply this with a little stir stick. Just plop it on my surface. And then I'm going to use a squeegee to... Pull it over my mesh or my silk screen, covering it up, making sure I get all of it. Watching for the areas that I'm going to do white. I don't want to accidentally bump them. Then I'm going to go over it, remove any excess, remove any lines, put the excess back in my my jar of paste. I've now pushed the chalk paste through the silk screen onto the surface beneath it. And the mesh or the silk screen give you this beautiful image. So I'm going to open up my bright white paste and do the same thing with the bottom wording. Oh, and I keep getting chalk paste. On my finger so check the consistency looks good apply it to the transfer use a squeegee I'm using a larger squeegee squeegee I didn't have to but it's what I had handy just want to make sure that I don't hit what anything that I've already colored teal It looks like I need a little bit more paste. A little bit more than I grabbed. Okay. Didn't all come off my stir stick. I'm going to get right up there to the top of my lettering. I have this little fancy squiggle up at the top that I want to get and there I got it all remove the excess remove any lines it's looking good time for peel and reveal how easy is this I'm gonna lift up my transfer from the bottom and just pull it up I'm gonna hold my board down a little bit so it doesn't jiggle and wiggle around on me 
Now this image is deliberately distressed a little bit, but how's that? Quick, simple, and such beautiful definition. We have to think about, are we going to do that heart, that heart and the hot mess technique and um, make it look like a little marbleized or something? Or what should we do in one solid color? What are you thinking? Drop a comment and let me know. I'm going to put this on the side to, pay, to dry. Our paste goes on liquid and dries to a hard matte finish in a few minutes. So I'm going to just set this aside and let it dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean this transfer and show you how you clean it. Now, generally, I have a water bucket next to me, a little, little square container, and all you need is some, a kind of bowl or a cookie sheet or something with about a half an inch or an inch of water, and you could just rinse it off in the bucket. I don't have that handy, so I'm going to spray or spritz the back of my transfer, the adhesive part, with water so I flip it over and it doesn't stick to my surface, and then I'm just hitting the front with water also. Then I'm going to grab a um, disinfectant. You could use a disinfectant or one of our board erasers. These are our board erasers. They come two in a pack and they're kind of like a magic eraser. You just wet them and then scrub it up. And they're really good for, for um, stopping staining to your transfer. The deeper pigmented paste will stain your transfer, but it has no impact on the usability of it. It just might leave a little bit of image or coloring on it, and that really is not a problem. So to clean my transfers, I usually go in a circular motion. You want to remove all the chalk paste off of the top, off the front. Making sure you get it out of the silk screen really well because you don't want any paste to dry there. And then flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Just one little extra step to the adhesive back that I'll show you when I'm, I'm done with this. So basically, go ahead and remove the chalk paste from the silk screen and from any of the vinyl that it might have gotten onto. I have a, soup, a little bit of a soupy mess here. Let me grab a paper towel. I did spritz a lot of water there. So just clean off the back. You can hold your silk screen or um, transfer in place if you need to. I sometimes get in a big hurry scrubbing it up and make it fold and bend and it's easier if you don't. So I make sure the silk screen's clean and then I use my disinfecting wipe to go back over it horizontally and just basically brush off any lint that I deliberately put on it. And that helps rejuvenate the adhesiveness of it. And I'm going to show you the trick with the fuzzing cloth in a moment. Okay. I'm going to put my fuzzing cloth down, microfiber side up. Put my transfer on the microfiber side, sticky side up, adhesive side up. Oh, I'm already getting stuck to it. Okay. And then just fold over the transfer and squeeze out any moisture. This helps the transfer dry quicker, especially useful if you need to reuse it or part of it or whatever. And then lift it off. And I just want to set it someplace to dry. So let me just set it aside. Um, cookie sheets are a great thing to set your transfers on to dry because they're flat and they're stackable and whatever. 
And if you're working on multiple things, that helps a lot. I am sorry, I meant cookie cooling racks, not cookie sheets, of course. Sorry about that. So what do we think? Should we do what, do um, nice marbling there with the heart? This is almost totally dry. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. I think the marbling would be good, would be kind of interesting, and I think it's pretty. It's sometimes called the hot mess technique. But I think if I do it right, well, we'll see. If it doesn't look right, I could just erase it, right? No harm, no foul, easy peasy. But this has a lot of um, silk screen, so a lot of background. So I think it would be nice with the um, with kind of marbling and with using the white and the teal with a back a black backdrop. My wording will be in the um, in the black because the paste won't go through the teal part. So I'll have black wording with a teal and maybe a white kind of marbling. We'll try it, right? What could it hurt? Not a lot of tool, extra tools needed. Basically, it's kind of what we've already done, only we're going to add a little finger painting with ourselves and a little bit of water. So let me fuzz this transfer first. want to make sure I use the Terry side. Take it off of its backer sheet. Apply it to my fuzzing cloth, smooth it down, lift it up, smooth it down, lift it up. Easy peasy, right? Smooth it down, lift it up. Okay, and I'm going to actually flip this over. I'm going to make sure I'm going in the same direction because if I put this on my board, it could be double-sided. And I'm going to set this up near the top. I'm not going to have it quite down to the bottom. Remember, i got to leave that a little more than a half inch or so there. I want to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles in my silk screen. That's the main thing when you have a larger place of uh, amount of silk screen. Visually check it. Check with your fingers, smooth it out. I had a little air bubble right here because you want the chalk paste to go through evenly and nice and smoothly. Okay, let's go with the hot mess technique, right? What the heck? Let's try it out. We are going to take a dollop of paste some teal and just drop it on there just kind of all over the place then I'm going to do the same thing with the white not big globs but it depends you could do big globs I suppose if you want I want to get a little bit of smearing and blurring together here and I'm taking care to make sure that I don't get any on my stir stick because I don't want to scrape this off and put white paste in my or actually accidentally get the blue mixed with my white so I'm trying to be a little careful whoops kind of dump too much there and I just wanted a little more mixed up here let's see a little white there a little more white here Okay, I think I've got it evenly distributed. We'll see. Never comes out the same way twice. So then, to smear this up a little bit, I'm going to wipe off my squeegee from before and use my larger squeegee. Clean the squeegees the same way you clean the trans um, the transfers. You could just use water. I didn't use my spritz bottle and paper towel. I'm just using a disinfecting wipe to clean it off real quick. Either is fine. 
Okay, now I want to spritz my fingers. Oops, let me get the paste off of them. Spritz my fingers with a little bit of water and then smear these together a little bit so I get a bit of marbling. So I'm doing it away from my surface so that my fingers are slightly wet. I don't want it to be soupy. I just want to be able to blend them without it sticking. fingers are drying out. I might not have enough paste in some of these areas. I'm going to add just a teeny bit more of white and a teeny bit more teal in a couple areas. to clean that up so I don't smear it on anything else. And let me spray my fingers again. Like I said, finger painting for adults. Ooh, that feels a little soupy. Not what I want. I don't want it to be really wet. Just so that I can blur a little bit. Okay, this looks good. Let me clean off my fingers. Then I'm going to use a squeegee to pull the paste all the way through the transfer. And if I've missed any areas, this is my time to catch it. Catch it, make sure I've got the silk, silk screen fully covered. Now, because this is a mixture of colors, I can't put it back in the jars. So you waste a little bit of paste doing that. Okay, I think I've got it cleaned up. Go down here. I think it looks good. Let's see what we're looking at. Peel and reveal time, right? Whoa, what do you think? Isn't it beautiful? Love you to the fridge and back. And work hard snack often. Both from the love you to the love you to the fridge or to the fridge and back. I'm sorry is the name of the transfer. Isn't this beautiful? Oops, and I'm smudging with my fingers. Oh no. Woe is me. Look at what I did. I got chalk paste on it. Oh no, I ruined it. No, I didn't really. Let me clean up my surface a little bit here. And I'll show you how to fix what I just did. First of all, I should be, my fingers should be cleaner, right? And look at, I even have chalk paste on the side. Oh no! Let me set this right here, actually. I think I could set it in my little base. Let that finish drying while I clean my fingers, clean my surface, put my paste away, and show you how to fix that problem. Oh goodness, I'm gonna have blue teal fingernails at this rate. Okay, I'm not gonna get all the paste off fully off my hands. I need to um I need to actually wash them under water. But let me show you how to put the backer on this transfer that has dried. Adhesive side up shiny side of the backer apply it to the transfer just line it up and lay it down never try putting the transfer against the backer i think this is a little bit crooked yeah it's a little crooked but i could straighten it out peel it back up it's fine 
it's all that to it. Never try trying to put the transfer onto your backer because you're going to be holding the transfer and having the sticky side stick to your fingers. Let me grab a little water for my own fingers here and clean this up, and then we'll clean up my board, the board. Fix my little oops there. Okay. I've got some smudges because I had chalk on my fingers and now I have it on my chalkboard. So let me show you what you do. Paper towel, a little bit of water. I want to make sure my surface is not wet here. Get that here. Just wipe it away. Even this, just wipe it away. It's that easy. Oops, and I just got some water right up here. Clean that up. That was from my finger bumping it, or the palm of my hand bumping it. So I've got this cleaned. Some chalk paste down here cleaned up. Now, how easy is that? And if you make a mistake, spritz it with water and do it again. It's no big deal. How many minutes did this take us? About a half hour for a double-sided sign. And we've cleaned up the transfer. I have to clean the other one up yet and cover my paste. But really, if you could butter toast, you can chalk. Thanks so much for watching. Fits perfectly in the base, double sided. So I could flip it around as I want, or I could use one of those clips and just clip this on my refrigerator door. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great West Rust rest of the weekend. See you soon.